Hey folks, Doug Blake with Body Design University, and today's video is on altered length tension relationship, chapter seven. And, um, you know, there is a whole lot of confusion out of this uh, short area of chapter seven, uh, and this is on page 208, uh, the actual concept of altered length tension relationship. And so uh, I'm often asked questions as to exactly what does it mean, and that's a simple definition, and how does that affect uh, the other areas in the in the textbook, and in particular, the postural distortion syndromes, and that's also an easy answer. So altered length tension relationship is, you just gotta look at the term, and again, if you're not familiar or you don't have any uh, real experience in anatomy or phys, and, and we know most folks that uh, try to take the NASM exam don't. It's really important that you kind of slow down, step back and understand that for the most part, all of these elements, all of these concepts, terms, um, have an extensive array of academic material associated with them. And that's what we don't want you to do. We don't want you to get so caught up in um, how this stuff plays out in the world of therapy or in the, or in just an academia, right? And, and research, uh, we would prefer that you stick with the materials the way NASM has them explained. Again, it's another reason why we say, please, please, please do not go outside of the NASM textbook as well as the BDU NASM exam prep materials. Stay within the little universe that has been created here because every time you step outside and you go to Google and you go to YouTube and, you, and there's great information, don't get me wrong, there's great information on all of this, particularly in chapter seven. However, when you go outside of their textbook, outside of the materials, particularly the materials that BDU has created to help you pass the exam, once you do that, you're now dealing with information that for the most part is not interested in helping you pass the exam. Please keep that in mind. We want to help you pass the exam. So it's their exam. It's their textbook. You take notes, you study, watch our videos, things like that, and make sure you are well within, well within the little, the parameters and the little universe we've created and that they've created to help you to navigate through to pass their exam. There's my, there's my introduction. So page 208, chapter seven, um, this, this falls under the, the subheading title of muscle balance. So in all, in order to understand altered length tension relationships, see how I did that altered length tension relationship, you got to understand the basis of normal length tension relationship. And that's what this area um, is going to help you to understand. Now it doesn't hurt to when you're reading through here to go to the heading title length tension relationships. And remember, Muscle balance is a subheading under on page 207. You'll see there's muscular force and then there's length tension relationships. Please keep in mind also, NASM has given you a lot of assistance here. They're basically telling you, they put it in blue so that you know when you see a term or word or concept in blue, it's gonna be over onto the right side. Your job is to memorize, you gotta know just the basic uh, definitions and basic concepts. So length tension relationship, and, and, and again, it's important to keep in mind that they give you some great information. They also give you perhaps um, information that's confusing. And that's why I have to go over this with you because if I'm asked anything by students that are confused is figure 715. Now, um, let me just tell you why it can be a little confusing. If you're not confused by it, great. But if there's one part that confuses folks, it's this picture and it's the it's the uh, length tension relationship where on your y-axis you have uh, force production potential and on the x-axis you have sarcomere length. You got to know what a sarcomere is. That's the um, fundamental contractile unit of a muscle cell. Now, here's where part of the issue comes in. In general, and I think they even show it in the textbook, whenever you see a, a picture or a figure of a sarcomere or a muscle, it's horizontal. It's horizontal like this, right? 
don't don't ask me why, but for some reason they decided to put the picture of the sarcomeres vertical. And I know for some of you, you're saying, is that a big deal? And for some folks, it literally is. They've said to me, I don't get what that means. And I once I say, well, it's a sarcomere that's vertical versus horizontal. And most folks go, oh, so just keep that in mind. The point here, looking at figure 715, is that the normal length of a sarcomere, the normal length of a sarcomere, right, that produces the highest tension is when it's at this length, right? So the normal length and tension that is developed at that length is shown on this little, this little um, figure and the line. The point is, is that when a sarcomere, remember actin and myosin filaments, right? They um, ride over each other, so to speak. Remember, you've got a, a myosin filament in the middle, and you got actin filaments that ride over it right to the center um, part of the sarcomere. And a shortened sarcomere does not have a lot of tension capability. And as the sarcomere lengthens and lengthens and lengthens, it gets more and more potential for tension development. That is the length, tension, the ability to generate force relationship. How are they related? Well, when a sarcomere, and i.e. the muscle belly itself, when the sarcomere is shortened, it has low force output. Its power output is, is low. Why? Because you have this major overlapping of the protein filaments, so they can't generate as much force. But as the sarcomere lengthens, and i.e. the muscle cell lengthens, the ability to generate force starts to go up, up, up. And there is this point in the sarcomere, there's a length, there's a specific length of the sarcomere where there is maximal power output. And that's what you're seeing in this, in this, um, in this chart with the length tension relationship. Then as the uh, sarcomere lengthens, reaches max power output, and at some point, max, max out power output. And then as the muscle uh, cell, i.e. the sarcomere, continues the length. And as it gets longer and longer, it once again loses power output. It's all because of actin and myosin filament overlapping and the total number of cross bridges that can be created. That is the length tension relationship. This is a standard, um, <clears throat> standard anatomical reality in your muscles, right? Muscles have a mechanical, right? there's metabolic but they have this mechanical component to them, which is what allows them to create movement, right? Shortening and lengthening. Every sarcomere, right, has a myosin or multiple myosin filaments and the actin filaments that overlap and ride over them. There are um, points at which the amount of tension that can be generated by the individual sarcomeres and therefore the muscle cells are minimize right when the when the sarcomere is shortened and when it's lengthened well beyond its normal physiological length and then there's like some point in the middle where you can see the max this max tension capability is being generated that is known as the length tension relationship now go to page 208 now i throw this word <laughs> this adjective in front of this Normal process, right? This normal physiological reality in the muscle cell. And I put the word altered. Well, obviously that means that the that the uh, the length and tension relationship is askew. Something ain't right. Now, length tension relationship on its own just refers to the individual sarcomere, just an individual sarcomere. But here's the here's sort of the the main point about this is as soon as you say altered length tension relationships, we're talking about multiple muscles around a joint. That's why I don't want you to get confused. So as soon as we move into and you'll notice that's why altered ta length tension relationship falls under the muscle balance subheading. General concept of muscle of length tension relationship, right, is specific to an individual muscle fiber, technically an individual sarcomere, right? But now when we talk about altered 
length tension relationship, which is what we're looking at here on page 208, that now is going to uh, fall under a more precise concept, which is muscle balance, which means we're dealing with more than just a sarcomere and more than just a muscle cell and therefore more than just a muscle. Now we're dealing with multiple muscles that are um, antagonistic to each other, right? And so that's why under the concept of muscle balance, we see that um, when we look at a joint, what we see around the joint are agonists and antagonists, right? We have muscles that oppose each other. And that's why the uh, figure 716 is helpful because it's basically showing you that around a joint you have, well, they're showing you two muscles. Okay, that's fine. If you look at the elbow, sure, we know there's three flexors at the elbow, but let's just assume we're talking about just one muscle, the biceps uh, brachii, and it's antagonistic muscle, the triceps. Keep in mind, the term agonist and antagonist are contextual to the movement that you're doing. The biceps during a bicep curl is the agonist. Remember those terms? If not, pause this and make sure you know what agonist means. It is the primary mover for that particular movement pattern you're doing. So a dumbbell curl, the bicep is the agonist because it is the muscle working, working through the particular range of motion against the resistance. Its antagonist is the tricep. Now, remember, it's contextual. During a dumbbell curl, agonist, antagonist. What happens when I put the dumbbells down and I go over and I start to do a push down, tricep push down? What's the difference? Agonist, antagonist. See how it flipped up? Because the two words, those two terms are contextual. It means that they're working around a joint. And so when you understand that, it makes this a little bit easier to kind of conceptualize. Altered length tension relationship simply means that the normal, normal tensions that are generated between two opposing muscles, an agonist and an antagonist, simply means that the normal tension relationships that are for proper functioning over that joint are screwed up, meaning that one of the muscles is hyper contracted or what is known as overactive receiving a higher we we technically say a chronic neural chronic over stimulation or chronic um increase in neural drive to the muscle which means the muscle is just shortening it's just contracted more than it should be does that make sense and so therefore the antagonistic muscle compensates for the for the agonist right it compensates by actually receiving a lower neural drive. In actuality, it's receiving a higher neural drive to the Golgi tendon organs, and that's going to uh, cause what's known as uh, altered reciprocal inhibition. We're not talking about that. Just stay focused on altered length tension relationships. All this is saying now is that from the, from the length tension relationship concept which is at the sarcomere level. Now we have to come up to the level of muscles to talk about altered length tension relationships. Hope that makes sense. Length tension relationship, the level of the sarcomere and the muscle cell, right? The ability to create tension. But as soon as you put the word altered in front of it, and we're talking about altered length tension relationships, now what we're doing is we're going more macro to the two muscles. And what I'm saying two muscles only because it's easier to conceptualize that. Two muscles on either side of a joint. So when we have altered length tension relationships, we have two muscles that should be at a specific length, a normal comparison between the two muscles and their length, right? Now we have one of those muscles is shortened, right? They're shortened more than they should be. And therefore, the other muscle now lengthens or becomes what's known as underactive. Now, if you haven't gotten to those chapters yet, you'll see and you'll understand why this concept is so important. Because as soon as we talk about altered length tension relationships, now we're talking about screwed up posture. And you're going to see, you're going to see it in later chapters where um, 
you're going to get to the postural distortion syndromes. And that's why this is so important. It's own on its own, the concept is critical because we do understand that under normal circumstances throughout the day, we are in positions, we do things that cause and create muscle imbalances. In other words, one muscle on one side of the joint is going to shorten, right? Like right now at my hips, my hip flexors are shortened because I'm seated. And my muscles are going to, my hip flex is going to sort of contract and shorten because they are being forced to be in a shortened position because of the actual positioning of my joints and my, and my limbs. My hip extensor muscles are now lengthened and they remain in a lengthened position. Why? Because I'm sitting and therefore they are lengthened and the neural drive and neural activity to those particular muscles is going to decrease. Like I said, the increase will go to the Golgi tendon organ, which downregulates the muscle spindle fibers. But it's just easy to understand lengthened versus shortened, right? Hi, um, overactive, hypertonic, overactive, underactive. So again, here you are in chapter seven, starting to get an understanding of what you're going to learn about and see more in chapters 11 and some of these other later chapters about um, the postural distortion uh, syndromes and your dynamic, your dynamic, um, dynamic uh, postural issues that you'll that you'll uh, look at. So again, that's chapter 11, 12, altered length tension relationship, then keep in mind, is always going to be related to muscle imbalances, right? The agonist, what we call the agonist, gets shortened, it has an increased neural drive, increased neural activity. And so therefore it tightens and contracts more than it should. Think about it this way. Um, if you look at these, if you look at figure 716, um, the muscles on either side of this, you know, this uh, upside down T, um, the muscles on either side are apparently working together in tandem. One is not stronger than the other, but yet when you look over to the muscle imbalance, you'll notice that the muscle on one side is shortened and, and a little bit rounder and the other one is lengthened. Now, altered length tension relationship then is what is occurring on both of these muscles. A shortened muscle has an altered length tension relationship with respect to its antagonistic muscle that in this case is being lengthened, okay? Again, why is this important? Because this is going to help you to understand why from a physiological perspective, uh, people have lower back pain or people have an arched lower back or people have this hunched forward, right? We call these the pest planus, lower cross and upper cross syndromes, which again, you'll see later on. This is a critical, critical concept. How do you memorize this? Well, do what we normally um, recommend that, that folks do, which is look at your side panels, start writing and rewriting so you can memorize the concepts, memorize what they mean, um, and this way you'll be able to utilize them further on through the rest of the textbook. I hope um, that this explanation was, was um, helpful to you. If you do have any questions or comments about this particular video or this particular subject, please write them in the comment section below. Also, um, if, if you understood this, if you understood it, then write understand. If you did not, if I confused you even more, well, then let me know that too. Um, maybe I can redo the video and make it even more simple. Um, also keep in mind, if you want full access to all of our NASM exam prep study materials, look in the description box below, go ahead and click on that link. Um, as always, uh, just let us know how we can be of assistance. Have a great week. We'll see you next week. Thanks.